At this point, we have our HTML structure and our CSS styles to block out our elements, uh, basic uh, sizes and positions within our layout. So for this exercise, I'm using images which I have placed on the mat server. So if you're in the 344 class, just know that your content is going to be on the rogue server. But for this example, everything's on that I'm linking to is on the mat server. Okay. So I'm going to be first working with the three planets and the planets are going to be in the upper left hand corner we're roughly on the right side towards the top for planet two and planet three is going to be on the bottom right okay now before we start dealing with the actual code we need to talk about the images themselves okay and let's first start with Let's, uh, let's bring their, their graphic up here. So let's find um, Illustrator. Okay. And before I get going on this, I'm just going to, I'm working with uh, Outer Space uh, graphic, the space poster. And I found this on uh, freepick.com. So part of their, um, procedure for using their content is you're supposed to uh, cite them and place a link in your footer or uh, as near as possible to the image. So free pick, there you go. I have placed what I'm supposed to place. All right. And I'll have that on the website uh, also. All right. So I'm going to use this graphic right up here. Okay. This, this uh, planet. So I'm going to go back and get out of isolation mode here. So I want this graphic. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this and copy it. So here are the planet, the planets. So I can easily get at this particular planet and copy it. So we could just edit, you know, um, copy. All right. So I've already done this and then I created a new um, Illustrator document and pasted this inside. And what's important when you're working with your web graphics with whatever programs, know what color space you're in, so or color mode. So in Illustrator, I'm going to make sure I'm in RGB mode. Okay. All right. And then um, I tend to keep my raster effects high at 300 and then they get sampled down when I export my graphics. Okay. All right. So what's going to happen <clears throat> is we've, we now have our planet and we have this in a separate illustrator file, which just makes it easier to deal with when we're exporting. You, you can export selections. Sure. But uh, I'm just going to isolate this element here, but what's going to happen is right up here where it's touching, and right here and right here and down at the bottom, that's just going to cause, cause me grief. So I'm going to select my planet here and then we'll just option click and hold the shift key. So we'll kind of constrain our scale from the middle. And I'm just going to bring this in a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Just so we don't have this element right up to the background here. So what I'm going to do is export this graphic from Illustrator. And then what we'll do is we'll open the graphic in Photoshop and we'll, we'll talk about uh, what, what happens to this, uh, to this image. Okay. All right. So what we need to do is let's go up to, where are we going to uh, file export? And I'm going to export save for web le uh, legacy. This is going to give me a few more options than just do my export as, and, and I'm not dealing with export for screens right now because I'm, I'm, we're not in a responsive environment at this time. So we'll do save for web le legacy. And of course this windows, a monster. So let's make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to go with P 
PNG. Now this might, I don't know what this might start out as for a preset, but we're going to go with PNG 8 dithered, which is going to give us a, um, a uh, binary, I believe, um, like a um, level of, of um, transparency. But you'll notice what we can get is we can get levels of gray still within our within our color so our transparency so it's a whole lot better than a gif image which just gives you a binary on off sort of transparency this is still in a binary sort of format but we can have um we can have levels of of gray which gives us a nicer alpha channel but it's it's not perfect it's not as good as a png 24 but the PNG 28 at the size I'm going to use this because I'm using this image at 500 by 500 pixels. So the idea is to get it as small as possible. So you'll see that my graphic over here is 12.35 K. Now, if I made this 24, it might not be a whole bunch bigger because it's, it's a simple flat graphic. But again, I'm going to go with the PNG 8, uh, 128 dithered, and we're going to make sure we have transparency okay and then we can go ahead and save and what we're going to do is name this test alpha and i'm going to save this to the desktop exercise five and i'm going to just save this into my exercise folder so it's going to be easy for me to find and let's not hide our extension okay and we'll go ahead and save all right and let's go ahead and hide illustrator and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our png file inside of photoshop and we're going to see what happens all right, so I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to open this up in Photoshop so you don't have to wait through that process. All right, so I have Photoshop open. So let's go ahead and open our graphic of our planet. And here we go. Now I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. And what you're going to see is this says, our layer says indexed. And that's because our PNG file, remember when we were looking at the... Um, the, the colors that are inside of this file, that's that color lookup table. Uh, I'm not sure if I still have it here. Let's, uh, let's see. All right, when we did our export legacy, here's our color lookup table, or what's called a clut table. So what happens is this has been placed into a, like an indexed color file. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. And let's just hide Illustrator for a moment. And what that means is if we go to image and mode, we're no longer in RGB. This, this uh, file has been indexed. So the colors which are in the uh, image itself are placed into a, a lookup table, a, a color um, uh, palette. And that palette becomes part of this image. And that's what makes it display as nice as it does and, uh, and it keeps its file size down. But, but now it's indexed and we can't work with it in Photoshop until we go back to RGB mode. Okay, so that's the first step. If we're gonna work with these, we know we need to go to RGB mode. Okay, and we should just take a quick look here. And in your, like, you can't see it, but you have your color settings and assign your profile and if I can go to assign profile, um, I want to make sure that I'm working in RGB, S RGB, not Adobe RGB or some other uh, uh, management for your color. For the type of word work we're doing, we want to be sure that we are in S RGB. Okay, just wanted to point that out. Okay. So now you'll see that we have, this is layer one. We could rename this planet, okay? And what we're going to do is we're gonna put, let's just go ahead and create a background 
I'm going to use a color that's going to somewhat emulate the color that I'm going to use in the background of my layout. So it's going to be sort of this purple. So we'll click OK. And now we're going to pour some color into our layer. And then let's layer, move our layer underneath. And you're going to see this awful sort of halo, this sort of bitmapped halo. And it might not have happened if we had a PNG 24, OK? But as our files get larger, now that PNG 24, that would likely create a really nice uh, transition, but our file sizes would get larger. So sometimes a trade-off with a, with a uh, smaller file is you get something like this going on. But that's OK. We, we can fix that, OK? And here's how we're going to do it. Let's go ahead and hide Photoshop for a moment. And we'll go back to Illustrator. And what I'm going to do is just select my artwork inside of Illustrator. And we're going to copy this. OK, so let's just copy. And what we're going to do is go back to Photoshop. And let's just make a new document. Now, we copied that image, so the dimensions of that image should go to our new document. So 489, 489, um, RGB, that's good. sRGB, that's good. And everything looks good to start. Okay, 8-bit RGB color, sRGB color profile. So let's go ahead and create. And then we'll zoom in a little bit. And let's paste. And we're going to paste as pixels. All right. And we should get some, uh, our artwork. Now it's going to look kind of weird, a little sod, a little bitmap. Let's go ahead and accept this. We're going to get rid of this background. We don't need it. So I'm just going to drag this and toss it away. This will be renamed Planet One. Hopefully we'll spell it correctly here. Spend more time selecting the P than it's worth there. All right, so Planet One. Now what's going to happen is, just like I mentioned in that Illustrator file, if I leave this we're going to get like this flat spot here and on these sides because our artwork is right up to the edge. So chances are we're going to get a real hard flat edge. So I'm going to go up to image canvas size. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to place relative. And that way, whatever I add for width and height will be added to what's already here. And then we're going to make sure this is anchored from the center. So let's just add, we don't need much. We're just going to add about five pixels because we don't, we don't need a whole bunch extra. OK, so let's add five pixels all the way around onto this 489, like so. That gives us just a little bit extra, which is nice. Now what we're going to do is just hold the Command key. Um, it would. Um, I don't know what it would be on a PC. It's not coming to a control, I believe. All right, so Command, and we're going to click and get our selection. Now what we want to do is I'm going to go up to Select, and we're going to Modify, and we're going to, going to contract our selection. And I'm only going to contract by two pixels. And the whole idea here is I'm bringing this selection in. So when we um, actually uh, select our image, okay, when we delete what will be the outside part, then we'll get a nice aliased transition from our color to, um, you know, to a transparent background. Okay, so I'm not going to take a chance of any of those white pixels that might have been associated with that Illustrator file, if, if it even was. I don't know, but I'm not going to take a chance. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and contract by two pixels, and we're going to go back up to select, and we're going to go to modify, and we will feather, 
and I'm going to feather only by one pixel. And we're going to click OK. Then let's select, and we're going to inverse our selection. So now we have the outer part selected. And then I'm just going to press Delete. I got to make sure my layer is actually selected here. And then we're going to press Delete. And we should see just a little bit if I zoom in. Okay we should see just this little bit go away. So let's go ahead and delete. And what you're going to see now, if I do a command Z, bring that back. And if we look at this edge, okay, there might be some little white pixels on here. And that's going to give you that halo. So I'm coming inside. Now they'll go ahead and delete. Okay. So now we have this transition of orange to our transparent background. So we should get rid of that halo. Okay, so I'm going to deselect command zero to zoom back out. And we are ready now to export our PNG. So I'm going to go ahead and right click. We're going to export as. See if I can make my window a little smaller here. Let's just quickly, we're going to go PNG smaller file. So right now this is 53.5. So let's go smaller. And we've dropped down to 17k. Okay, that's substantial, especially if you have a lot of images in your layout. All right, we're going to make sure we embed our color profile. And we're going to export. And this will be planet one and I'm going to call out that it is in fact alpha. And I'm just going to save this to my exercise five. I would save it into my images folder, but I'm just going to save it here by that original PNG. Okay. So we will save. Okay. And now let's go ahead and hide Photoshop. And we'll hide Illustrator. And in the next video, what we're going to do is take a look at what that image looks like when we start adding adding them to our um, CSS to our CSS uh, styles.